Hey everyone, this is Brian from Provision Studios and today I'm going to do a video on using contact uh, inside of Harrison Mixbus. This is a request from a subscriber that sent me a message asking if I could show how to route uh, contact you know, through the, um, the doll Harrison Mixbus. Um, Harrison Mixbus is a uh, basically what you can call a uh, an analog console emulation doll is how I like to classify it. It literally uh, built on the algorithms uh, from their world famous consoles that were used in Hollywood or are used in Hollywood for many of the blockbuster movies and um, uh, uh, music albums that we have grown accustomed to. Uh, building, you know, our foundation off of in regards to things that we we love. So it's at the very Harrison is at the very core of the things that we deem to be uh, artistically relevant in our society, um, and they're taking that technology uh, and bringing it into the digital realm with their uh, Harrison Mixbus doll. So I'm going to show how you would take a, a virtual instrument through the contact player and um, route it properly uh, so you can get it working in your uh, mix bus doll. Okay, let's dive in and see what we can do. All right. All right, here we are inside the computer. And uh, when you open up Harrison Mix Bus and you select your project or new, the first window that comes up right after that is the audio MIDI setup window and the key here is that if your MIDI system says none then you won't be able to uh, work with virtual instruments so you want to make sure that you have this set to core MIDI on a Mac and then whatever it is for a, um, a Windows computer I'm not sure I don't work with Windows so uh, you can look on their website uh, to find out what it is that um, uh, that it, that you have to have in order for uh, the mix bus Harrison mix bus to work uh, with the your um, your MIDI drivers. Anyway, right after that, you're going to have it do a, a plug-in scan, which is customary. It does it every time to make sure that all the um, system plugins are still are active. All right. Now this is your mixer window, and here is your editor window. Very simple. All right. So first thing you want to do is you want to uh, create a new MIDI track. The way we do that is we go to MIDI actually let me do this let's go stereo MIDI and then here you can name you know what it is you want I'm gonna call it contact and then right here is where you can select um, the virtual instrument that is going to be put onto this MIDI track. So um, Mixbus will automatically load the instrument for you. So you can click on here and we are going to put in contact. All right, so there we go. You can click add. If you know you want to add more tracks, or if you know you just want to do the one track, you can click Add and Close, meaning that this Add Track Bus window will close after it adds the uh, the track you asked it to do. So that's what I want to do. I just want to create the one track. We're going to add that, and there we go. All right, so here's our contact instrument. See right here? Um, I'm going to use uh, scoring strings. 
Okay, so we got my instrument loaded. Now for the routing, you want to click on this top panel to bring you to your I.O. You'll notice the N needs to be set uh, to your MIDI controller. In this case, I'm using the Keystation Pro 88. That's my what I have set, hooked up via USB uh, to be my MIDI controller or my MIDI instrument. All right. This uh, this button right here is allows you for your uh, your MIDI uh, input to be enabled. So if you click on that, even if you have something selected here, it's not going to communicate with that with that controller. So you want to make sure that you have that selected in green is is lit. You want to have in to so you can monitor that MIDI input, and then you want to have the record enabled. All right, and that'll get us started. I'm going to go over to my keyboard and play something, and uh, we'll we'll see what we got. So let's see what we got here. All right, so there we go. We got communication from our virtual instrument, which is contact scoring guitars by Heaviosity. It's running through our MIDI track into our master bus. Let's go over to the editor, and let's record that real quick. Because I want to show you guys also how to bounce down the MIDI once you're happy with what you've got. All right, so we'll just let this run. I'm going to go over to the keyboard and play it, play it in. All right, so we got our instrument written in. Let's go back to our mixer, our I.O. Let's turn off the monitoring in. We don't want that now because we want to hear what we've recorded, and the input disables actually what's on the track. It only allows you to hear what's coming through your input. In this case, that audio is not on the input. That audio is already in the DAW itself, so we want to disable that. Go back to our editor, hit return, which takes us back to our start point, which we can actually, we can move it right here now.
All right, so let's say we're happy with our performance, and now we want to take our, our our MIDI track and we want to make it uh, a bounced audio file that we can then mix in our session um, without having to worry about uh, the MIDI instrument using a bunch of our computer's resources, our CPU power. So what you want to do is you want to go back to your track add track window. We want to create an audio track and we want to hit add and close. Again, I'm just added the one track so I don't need that add track window to stay open. So add and close automatically closes it for me. I want to call this contact print we're going to go to our mixer window we're going to go to the IO and on the output we want to go to mix bus 32 C tracks and here's our track we just created contact print in so we want to select the left and the right what that means now is now our MIDI track is going to go out from, instead of go feeding into the master fader, it's going to feed into this audio track. So if I select in and record, go over to the editor window, hit return to take me to my start point, and hit record. Right, there you go. All right, so now this is an actual uh, print of what was on that MIDI instrument. So, again, we can go back to our editor window, or I'm sorry, our mixer window. Turn off input monitoring. Now we can listen to this track with its audio. There it is. And then now what you'd be able to do is you'd be able to do some uh, mixing and editing of this printed track and still have the original MIDI track to where it's, uh, you know, you're, you're not... You, you don't need its resources to be dragging down your CPU and for uh, things that you're going to want to do uh, with mix intensive stuff. You don't want to have a bunch of virtual instruments uh, taking up 60% of your CPU power and only leaving you with a small portion of CPU processing power to do heavy mixing tasks. So um, this is a great thing to do if you uh, get into your session and you start realizing that your system's crashing, you're getting audio dropouts, or um, you're getting a lot of lag, uh, and, 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 and you're just you're not n noticing a real robust system performance. Chances are you've got, you've got too many virtual instruments running at once. You need to pr print some of them and then um, allow those resources to go to just you're mixing and playback instead of the processing of getting those virtual instruments to sound uh, the, uh, the you know the instrument that you put on the the MIDI track. All right, there you go. That's showing how to create a new MIDI track, putting a uh, virtual instrument on it, having it uh, being routed to our MIDI controller, and then once we're done, taking that that MIDI uh, 
section and bouncing it to a new audio track for further processing. If you have any questions about what I showed today, or if you'd like to see me uh, you know, do another tutorial on a different topic, uh, please uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below in the video. You can email me at bbuck822 at gmail.com. As always, you can go to my website, www.provisionstudios.com. You can click on the contact tab and that'll send me a message letting me know that you have a question for me. Um, if you'd be so kind, uh, please like, subscribe, and share this video. That would mean a lot to me. And until next time, you guys have a great time mixing. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.